Mike Poglius here, co-founder of Automated Coaching Engine, where we partner up with transformational coaches to help them scale their businesses without spending money on platforms like Facebook and Instagram. And in this video, I'm going to talk about, you know, a couple of takeaways that I got from uh, Jeff Bloomfield's, uh, you know, neuro selling topic. You know, one of the biggest things when it comes to uh, just life in general is, you know, knowing how to effectively communicate is ultimately the key to success. And there's a bunch of books about, you know, communication and a bunch of, you know, uh, information out there about communication. Like, for example, the book called Art of Communication, excellent one as well. But, you know, in reality, the only way that you can reach the happy land, <laughs> as I like to call it, if you can communicate effectively. And, you know, so going back to what I just said, you know, knowing how to effectively communicate is ultimately the key to success. And going into uh, this a little bit further, you know, people want to be told what to do. And, uh, you know, we need to learn how to solve our own problems. So, you know, at the end of the day, like we need to become problem solvers, especially we as like transformational coaches or people in the coaching space, you know, we really need to become the, the best possible problem solver that we can be. And, you know, what this is going to require is us being critical thinkers. That's what's ultimately going to be going to make us successful as uh, coaches in the, the coaching space or the, the transformational coaching space. And, to kind of sum that point up, you know, problem solvers ultimately rule the world. Um, you know, people that, that can solve problems are paid specifically for that. You know, if you can think about products, you know, like, uh, for example, this, this iPad here, you know, iPads were created because, you know, people needed a way to, you know, use something similar to like a laptop, but not as like hunky dunky and boom, voila iPad, you know, there's tons of things that that are products of the world that are a result of somebody, you know, solving another problem that's out there. So going into uh, kind of like the first segment of what I really want to talk about here is number one, the platinum rule. And this is, you know, something that we all want to live by, uh, you know, especially people that are, you know, in my community, I definitely want you guys to live by this. But it's always going in, into everything with the mindset, the mindset or the aspect of treating somebody better than they expect to be treated. And not only is that going to you know, benefit uh, that person on the other side, but it's also going to benefit yourself. And <clears throat> just to repeat that again, it's treating somebody better than, than they expect to be treated and fulfillment of benefiting them at the highest level. But in return, because you did that, it's going to come back and benefit you too. So going into kind of like the topic of neuroselling. Now, I'm not going to get into like the scientific shit about this. To be honest, like the scientific stuff doesn't matter to me. But what does matter is how this topic correlates into sales in general. Um, so number one, you know, all decisions are made, number one, with emotion and number two, with analytics. So the key here is we always want to put ourselves into a position in a sales situation where we're triggering that emotional uh, side, that, that emotional decision making side of things before we trigger the analytics. And <clears throat> we'll go into this a, a little bit deeper, but ultimately the, the emotions come into play first, then the analytics. And if you flip flop that, you're going to put yourself into a situation where you're constantly getting no's because people are always being triggered by analytics, where the reality of the emotional feeling of your service or product is never going to come into play. So, you know, just kind of like a real, real basic example, if you can think about like when you're hungry, now you feel hungry, so you decide to eat, right? So if we can think about that a little bit further, the emotional side is triggered first and emotions and feelings are, you know, kind of two different things. But for this sake, you know, we're going to say an emotion is a feeling <laughs> uh, or a feeling is a emotion. So, you know, feeling hungry is, is when you decide to eat. You don't just like sit there and you're like, uh, I'm going to eat, you know, and just because and, and maybe you do, you know, maybe you do because something tastes good, but ultimately that's an emotion as well. You know, you, you might eat a specific thing or a piece of candy or a shit ton of candy because it tastes really fucking good and therefore you want to eat it. 
and going into the the aspect of hunger you know like you you feel hungry so you decide to eat you have the emotional connection that triggers the analytical result that's going to pull that hunger away you know ultimately like when the human brain is under pressure it's always going to communicate from its highest level of training knowledge and belief now the reason that this is important to highlight because the the highest level of training knowledge and belief is usually based around the analytical side of of the product service or transformation it's talking about like how it's done you know focusing on the results or the data behind it and so you know, I, I mentioned this because when we put ourselves into sales situations or situations where we're talking about, um, you know, how we can potentially help somebody, we are under pressure, you know, our brain is under pressure. So we, we constantly revert back to, you know, the highest level of training, knowledge and belief, which isn't a bad thing at all. But it's, it's about like the order of the information. So, you know, the product is always going to trigger the analytical brain, you know, like, for example, you know, if somebody just walks up to you or somebody, you know, you're walking down, you know, through the mall or something, or you're in Puerto Rico and you're walking down the street and you got these people, hey, you know, like, check out my watches, you know, check out my bracelets, you know, the analytical mind is being triggered over and over and over. And what do you do? You just ignore them. You just keep looking straight and you keep going. You're like, I don't give a fuck about your watches, dude. So, you know, like instead, you know, what we need to do is start, you know, serving by solving a problem. So if we can think about, you know, like that same concept, you know, like maybe it's the feeling of that watch or the feeling of having that bracelet, that memory of your time in Puerto Rico, you know, so like if those guys, you know, like those street corner, you know, vendors, if they started, if they were yelling at people like, hey, don't, don't let your, you know, your memories of Puerto Rico fade away, get this little bracelet that will be a constant reminder. People will be like, oh shit, you know, that's right. I'd I actually don't want to ever forget this trip. This was the best trip of my life. So I am going to get that little bracelet because it, you know, it's going to remind, it's going to be a constant reminder, even if I never wear it, you know, anytime I see it, whether it's sitting up on my shelves or whatever, it's going to constantly remind me of that trip that I had and the experiences, the emotions that were experienced on that trip. It's really just about kind of like the right information being delivered the right way and ultimately in the right order. And like I said, you know, like I, I'm not going to go into the scientific side of things like left brain cells or right brain cells, whatever the fuck you call it. But if you want to check out more of this stuff, you can just check out Jeff Bloomfield's book called Neuroselling. He goes into this in a really deep level, but I just wanted to talk about the, the stuff that I pulled out of it. So moving into kind of like the sales side of thing and how this, how this really directly correlates into sales is, you know, there's, it ultimately comes down to, you know, like confidence in sales. And what I mean by that is like, obviously mindset is everything when it comes to sales. If you're not converting in sales, it likely has to do with a mindset issue. You yourself, you yourself are the, the focal point of your mindset. And ultimately the beliefs that you have drive the behaviors that, that you put out. So you need to 100% believe that your service will help the individual on the other side. The, the person that you're speaking to, the person that might be seeing your, your content, you 100% need to believe that this is going to help them. And if you don't, you're putting yourself into a limiting mindset where you will not perform because you're, you are trying to sell, not serve. So this is really, really, really important. And building extreme confidence in sales uh, really comes down to, you know, your mindset has to be serving by solving, you know, so we need to start shifting into kind of like this human impact, how we how can we help the person on the other side, and we can do that by learning and understanding the prospect, we can do that by solving their problems. So, you know, going into, uh, you know, kind of like, if we can think about like the the greatest salespeople in the world, you know, these, these people aren't thinking about like their product or the quota. They, they know about their product. They know their quotas 100%. Don't ever doubt that. But they don't think about these things when they're in a sales situation. You know, they think about how this product is going to, to help this person solve a problem. They're thinking about how this, this iPad is going to help somebody solve a problem. You know, so, and they're also thinking about the feeling that they get from helping someone solve a problem. So if we can think about number one, how the person on the other side is going to be after this problem is solved, it's obviously a, a huge belief that we have towards, you know, the product helping this person solve a problem. Not to mention, we can think about the feeling that's going to bring to us, 
you know, we're going to be like, fuck yeah, man. I hope this guy make $30,000 in 90 days, man. I'm so freaking stoked, you know? So not only is that guy happy as fuck that he made 30,000 in 90 days, but so am I. So less product, more emotion. That's what it really comes down to. Now, every human <laughs> on the planet is a salesperson. The question is, is are you communicating the right information, the right way and the right order for mutual benefit? It's very important. Like I said, every single human in the planet, on the planet is a salesperson. It really just comes down to, are you communicating the right information, the right way and the right order for mutual benefit? The 360 win is, is really important. You win and therefore I'm gonna win. That's very important. Now, when it comes to, um, you know, just kind of like the, the sales process in general, you know, overall it always starts with, you know, creating a connection, report building, and, you know, the biggest thing is keeping that report building on topic, you know, so like connecting with them, them like where they, they reside, you know, talking about like family, like their family activities, you know, getting to learn about them a little bit more, but always transitioning that into the topic at hand. So a lot of times this is very good for a lot of us that are in the transformational coaching space because we can talk about activities with family and what do you do with your free time? How, how is the area like? And we can take that stuff and use it as ammunition when it comes into us talking about our product. For example, health and fitness side of things are, are really big when it comes to impact with family. You know, you look good, you feel good, you're going to be operating real good, you're going to be able to go on the hikes, you're going to be able to, you know, go to the skate park, you're going to be able to do all these things with your kids. And ultimately, it's going to make you feel really, really, really good and, and be there for your family. That's triggering emotion at a really high level, because any like, well minded person in the world wants to be there for their family at the highest level. And um, you know, what this really comes down to is, you know, the, in the sales process is, you know, we have personal trust and we have professional trust. And it's very, very, very important that we establish both of these, you know, when it comes to the sales process. So now the, the report building is obviously just kind of the small talk situation, you know, to get, you know, some commonalities, some likability involved. Now, when it comes to the personal trust side of things, this is this needs to be established right right after you know like the the report building section is done and basically the personal trust is is going to be you know the the belief center um you know of me believing that you know you are authentic honest uh humble and uh you show me some sort of vulnerability and that's what's really going to create personal trust now, the professional trust side of things is my perception of your credibility, your knowledge, and your skill. You know, how, how do I think that, you know, you are credible to the world? How do I think that you are knowledgeable to the world? And what type of skills do you even have? Now, going into kind of like the sales process order. So, like I said, you know, you want to go into report building, and then you want to dive into, you know, like a personal story, you know, create that authenticness, that honesty, that humbleness. Uh, and ultimately show some sort of vulnerability. So going into, you know, the personal story side of things, it's where we go into, you know, hey, let me tell you about what, why I do what I do. It's really important that you hear this. And then we go into our personal story. And through that, we're creating, you know, authentic connection. We're being a little bit vulnerable with that person on the other side. And ultimately, we're, we're creating that personal trust. We're, we're, we're telling them about who we are. And because of that, we're going to we're going to be able to transition it into the next section, which is the prospect stories. So why do you do what you do? And then you get the prospect story. So basically refresh on this order. It's the report building, you know, sharing the personal story, getting the prospect story. But now we're going to take that prospect story and we're going to tell it back to them. This is going to this is going to create an insane level of personal trust because it's like, Hey, this guy, you know, opened up to me. He told me about what he's doing and how he helps people with things like that, X, Y, and Z. But at the same time, he just told me my story that I told him. So I know he's listening. I know he's understanding me. So that's really important. And after we move from the personal story to the prospect story, the next step is really going to be asking them questions that lead to the problems that they're experiencing that we can ultimately help, help them with. But at the same time, we want to be asking them, you know, how did these problems make you feel? And that's going to trigger the emotion. 
So we created that personal trust where they're going to open up and be super vulnerable with you because we established that personal trust. They're going to tell you every single thing that you want to hear. And ultimately that stuff's going to be ammunition going into the, the problem side of things like the problem story. So the next step is going to be the problem story, which is telling a story about the prospect's problem and their feeling to it. It really shows that you're paying attention and you're listening to them. And then we're going to move into the product solution story, which is really diving into kind of like the analytical side of things. And like I said, from the beginning, it's very important that the emotions are triggered before the analytics come into play. We've created that personal trust. We've triggered the emotions. Now we're coming into the analytical side of things. So it's a perfect flow. Now, the product solution story is here's how I'm going to help, you know, solve your problem. Uh, and, and keep in mind, this is already with the emotional side of things triggered. So they're going to be really attached to that outcome. So do you do do I know that 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 you care about what I care about? You know, can I trust you on a personal level? Are you passionate about helping people like me solve problems I have? And how do I know that? How do I know that you care about what I care about? Tell me a story about me, not you. You know, now you're trustworthy. You can lead up to, you know, how you can solve the problems and ultimately go in for the kill. So I want to give you a little story example and, you know, just kind of overall, like an example of how we run our sales process on our end. And I think you guys are going to get a lot of value out of this because it's going to really show you exactly what we do to establish that personal trust and that professional trust when it comes to our process. So like I said, number one is obviously going to be the report building, creating the small talk, you know, going in uh, and finding, you know, ways that we can create the like and the no side of things. And then we're going to move into the trust as we go further through the pitch. But the biggest things that I like to connect with people on that, that I can often relate to is like, Hey, what do you like to do with your family? You know, what type of adventures do you go on? You know, what type of, you know, fun, what things do you do for fun? You know, what's your lifestyle? Like, you know, like, what do you do? Like, as far as like routines and stuff like that, like most of those things I can connect with and create that personal level of, uh, of connection. And then we roll into, you know, telling the story. So for example, you know, my story is cool. So I just want to give you some background um, on how I got here so you can understand me a little bit better. You know, it's important that you hear this. Does that sound good? And they're like, absolutely. You know, I'd love to learn a little bit more about you uh, because I don't know who the fuck you are. <laughs> And I'm like, all right, cool. So in 2018, you know, I started a company called Brandberry HQ. I had a guy that was referring me a shit ton of business. And at the end of 2019, uh, we decided to team up and, and form uh, Brandberry Unlimited, which by the way, that guy is still my partner, which and his name is Mike Anderson. Um, in our first year, we scaled from, you know, zero to $400,000 in, in revenue without spending a single penny on ads. But during that time, we spent 35000 plus on a few coaches where we saw some insane transformations, um, not just in our, our business, but in our personal lives as well. And the breakthroughs we experienced really made us passionate about the coaching space. Now, to be transparent, we quickly realized that Mike and I are not relationship coaches, health coaches, or anything like that. But what we did have was the business knowledge, the marketing, and the sales experience gained from running our seven-figure agency, Brandberry Unlimited, that I mentioned earlier. So that's when we decided to partner with transformational coaches to help them increase their impact via ACE, Automated Coaching Engine. And then it's like, so cool. Tell me a little bit more about like why you do what you do. So notice what I did there is like, you know, I created that, that level of trust by, you know, talking about some of the things that we had went through, you know, the experiences. And I also, you know, mentioned some things that they would deeply connect with on an emotional level. Number one, you know, the business side of things, zero to $400,000 in revenue in one year without spending a penny on, on ads. A lot of people would dream of that shit. So the person on the other side is really going to resonate with that. And not to mention it's fucking true. And uh, then the other thing that they really connect with is likely their connection to why they became a coach. And this is going to come out in full detail when they start sharing their story, because the, the same thing that we experienced with our coaches, they likely had some similar breakthrough themselves with a coach. So that makes that common connection between something that we both have and then one that they want, you know, the zero to 400,000 is what they want. What we both have is that connection of, of our experience when it comes into the coaching space. Um, and then so getting into their story, that's when they open up. Well, actually, you know, I got here because, you know, I experienced this, you know, divorce and, 
you know, it, it left me very, you know, traumatized every time I saw somebody that looked like them, like I was constantly like, just, you know, fearing like, what, what could possibly happen or what did happen, you know, the experiences I went through, et cetera, et cetera. And so they're opening up, they're talking about their experience, but at the same time, likely going to transition it into like why they became a coach. I was able to, you know, figure out a way to, you know, combat this, to, to deal with these, you know, healings and emotions on my own. And because of that, I want to help other people do the same, you know, like I, I know there's other people that experience that same thing and, you know, I want to help them do that. And I'm like, wow, that's amazing, Cindy. You know, I'm, I'm so happy that, that you shared that with me. And, you know, you felt the, the calling to even talk about that with me. I, I really, I really like that. So just to make sure like I'm understanding correctly, basically you got here because, you know, you were experiencing something with a divorce that constantly built, you know, brought back like anxiety and anger and frustration of just like the overall, like, how can I extend my life further? And you, you figured it out whatever that was, I'm not really too sure. But, you know, obviously, because of that, you want to go on and, and help more people, you know, uh, do the same thing. And she's like, Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. And I'm like, Okay, cool, perfect. And so what that did is, you know, I shared my story, she shared her story, and it created that personal level of trust, because I was able to tell her story back to her, it showed I was paying attention to what the fuck she was saying, and not just a robot on the other side. Now, this is when we can obviously go into pre-framing the call and just letting them know like, hey, you know, this is a sales situation, you know, by the end of this call, you know, I want an A, you know, let's get this shit rocking, a B, no, I don't think you're the right guy or a C, you know, I got to think about it. And I want to avoid the C, but you, you got to think about it because if, if you got to think about it, there's some confusion. And that means I didn't explain everything effectively. So if you have any questions throughout the process, make sure you ask them because I want to avoid C at all costs. I want an A, yes, or a B, no. And so then they're like, okay, cool. That sounds perfect. Now we go into the questions. This is where we start digging for the problem. Like, what, what are you experiencing? Like, how many people do you want to impact this year? What, what's holding you back from that goal? You know, what, what are some of the things that you've tried to achieve that goal that haven't worked? Um, you know, what, what, does that, what does that goal mean to you? Ultimately, what does success look like to you? And the cool thing about these questions is, you know, they're telling me the goals that they want to hit. They're telling me the things that they have tried, you know, to do to achieve this goal. They're telling, they're giving me all of the things that I want to know. So when, when I go into the question of what does success look like for you, I tell them what it looks like for them. You already told me this is what your, your goal is. This is what you're struggling with. Um, you know, these are some things that have tried that you've tried to get there. And ultimately, if we can, if we can help you solve those problems, that's what success is going to look, look like for you, right? Does that sound like I nailed it? And they're like, yeah, that's spot on. That's exactly what success looks like for me. And so now, so what I just did there was, you know, what does success look like for you is I told them their story of the problem. I, I relayed the, the problem information, their goal, the, the, the shit that they tried that didn't work and um, ultimately showed them that I, you know, I established another level of, of trust. You know, I, I told them their problem story. So now, you know, I'm going to go into the problem solution story where it's going into the program. So what we do here is at Automated Coaching Engine is X, Y, and Z. You know, we're going to provide you with a faucet of leads, you know, X, Y, and Z using our magnetic method. You know, we're going to give you the exact step-by-step uh, -step framework to have, you know, clients chasing you instead of you chasing clients, et cetera, et cetera. And now we, we put ourselves into a position where we have crafted an offer specifically to them just based on the information and the communication that we had between each other. And so this is really important because um, now we put ourselves into a position where the, the best thing that I think is to go into a temp check. So on a scale from one to 10, where are we at right now? One being you hate me, 10 being you think this is a perfect solution to your problem. And pretty much like nine times out of 10, people tell me it's a nine. And so what I do is I ask them, like, how can we get that to a 10? They're like, oh, well, this one thing, you know, I wasn't too sure about. All right, cool. Let's clear that up and move on. Clear it up. Is it a 10 now? Yeah, it's a 10. Perfect. Now let's go into the price drop. So that whole process is, is really powerful if we can think about it on an, uh, on an outside, like bird's eye view level. And uh, 
and just to kind of like run through like what we did there is ultimately you know we build some like small so, some small talk with the person we we did some report building we told our story and we got their story and told their story back to them to create that personal level of trust then we pre-frame the call we asked them some questions to really dig up the problems that they're experiencing and the emotions attack attached to that problem how do they feel about it to trigger that emotional mindset to to trigger that emotional connection to the problem that is and what that did is, you know, it put us into a position to where we could tell the the tell a story about the problem to the back to the prospect. So you're experiencing this, you're having a hard time getting leads, and you know it's making you feeling frustrated, burnt out, angry. I, I get it, totally makes sense. So now then we go into the the program and keep in mind what do we do here? We we establish a personal level of trust. We dug up the real problem and the emotion attached to that problem. Now, and then we told a story of that problem. Now we're doing the, the, the problem solution story by going into our program. So that's really the, the four main you know, steps that you really want to accomplish when it comes into neuroselling. And that's exactly how it's done. Voila. So with that being said, I hope you got a shit ton of value out of, uh, out of this video here. Like, comment, subscribe, turn on the little notification thing so that way you see all of them. And um, we'll end it here. So with that being said, Mike Poglis, co-founder of Automated Coaching Engine, where we partner up with, the, with uh, transformational coaches to help them scale their businesses without spending money on platforms like Facebook and Instagram. Have a good one. We out.